I haven't done a video in a while because I've been working on things that I don't want people to send me more of. So I thought I thought it would be a good idea to just uh, not show you so no one thought, hey, I should send mine. Um, anyway, I am going to try and do some BSA cranks today. And I wasn't going to make a video out of it, but I thought this would be a good example as to... Um, the different ends of the spectrum I guess for like the way a crank can be as far as a condition um, I have this one set up right now and I'm going to show you this timing journal is extremely worn out um, the overall wear is like super tapered it, it, it's typical it happens a lot um, but the thing that's frustrating is it, Theoretically, the radius shouldn't really be worn out. There'd be no reason for that to have like a crazy amount of wear on it. I mean, it can happen, but um, when you check this radius, and I don't know if I'm going to have a good enough lighting. Um, see if I can get an angle on it where you can see. It's in incredibly tight. It's like a, a 30 second um, tight, which is um, extremely uh, narrow for what it should be. It should be a 16th. And so if you can see that gap in there. Now, if I take you over to this crank, you can hopefully maybe see how much better of a fitment. It's still not perfect, but it's much closer. Um, I've been told so many different stories about, oh, it just depends on who did it that day, or you know, maybe uh, this journal got ground first and that journal got ground, you know, who knows, uh, later on with you know a poorly dressed wheel um and so what can happen is you know i go in and i try to cut this one it's gonna look great when i'm done i have this beautiful blended out radius but then i come over here and go to grind this one and it's gonna look horrible um and there's really nothing i could do i can't put material back in here and i'm not going to custom match my wheel for every bad radius it just doesn't make sense so i just thought i would kind of point that out and show you guys um the different spectrum it, it, it normally i would blame it on oh it's a the previous person at grind a lot of times with like the rod journals you see that you know somebody will grind at 10 and they'll use whatever you know practically 90 degree edge on their wheel and then i have to go in and try and make it look nice with my proper radius um but in this case you know this is still standard it's just extremely worn um and it's just the whole radius is gone and it, it maybe it did maybe it got worn out from the bushing i don't know i just don't normally see that but um yeah so it's frustrating you know trying to battle with this stuff because now when i get done it's not going to look as good as it should and i i really hate that but what i'll do is this is still at 330 seconds from triumph i'm going to go ahead and dress it um, for a 16th. I'm going to do both of these timing side bushings. I've just got the two. Yeah. Okay. I just got the two A65s to do. So I'm going to do both of these timing side journals really quick. And then, um, once I'm happy with those, I will put stroke in these chucks and we will do rod bearings or rod journals on both of these. Um, this one I have to check balance on and shim it in the bottom end. And this one I'm just grinding and sending back. And as you can see, this one had an oil pump failure. That does not look good. But not structurally damaged, nothing happened. It's not bent, it's not cracked, everything's good. So um, it will get made good again. It's kind of a crude way of checking, but uh, you just take a piece of cardstock or like tag board, whatever you want to call this, and I'll just kind of gently push it into the wheel, and it translates a pretty crisp edge. Um, I don't know, it kind of looks a little dirty with that uh, where the coolant you know got on it, but either way, that's just kind of a, a quick way to check the radius, uh, and then if I'm like pretty happy with it, I'll stop the wheel, and then I'll do like a actual proper check, and so can't do this left-handed uh but i'm good with that i will cut the bushing journal with this i have two of them to do like i said and then we'll swap out wheels because we need to go to the other um 
We need to go to the other grinding wheel because that's the one that is already close enough to the 1 8 radius that we need to use on these journals. So we're just gonna get kind of close and then keep bringing this in so we can set the stop. So I'm gonna start spinning it away a little bit, give us more room to play. All right, so this is now at the end of the run out for the power feed. And so now I can adjust it accordingly and I never have to worry about my power feed running me into the journal. Um, so I'm going to feed in pretty close here. I don't want to get you guys in my way, but I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm just feeding this wheel in until we get closer and closer. this my bottom two turns out for safety and we're gonna leave that there um, I don't remember if I have this so. okay I do have I've got my grinder gauge um, kind of in range um, what we're gonna do is just like always on all these journals we're gonna grind and check we're gonna get it round see where we're at and then go from there I am pretty confident this is going to 20 um, it is an extremely worn standard right now um, like we're talking like six thousandths worn out and so I just have a hard time believing I'm going to be able to catch it at um, 10 so we're just gonna grind it till it's a clean cut and then we'll measure it and see but I'm going to I broke my uh, little holding stand so I will no longer be able to put you in a um, tripod for now but we're gonna try and get this shot anyway Okay, so just like we talked about, that radius just isn't really going to look that great. And there's nothing we can do about it. Um, I finally got all the way around. And it's really not looking good. Um, just as far as getting it at 10. Um, I fought, uh, it, it took quite a bit to get all the way around. I had a really low spot at the bottom. Um, and so I'm going to... Uh, get a measurement on it and then we'll jump over and we'll clean up this side and um, we'll just let our steady rest do its job over here um, but I think we're going to go to 20 for sure on this one okay so we're at 45 which means uh, three thousandths under what the ten thousandths under would have caught would have got us so uh, that means we're going to 20 I'm going to just go ahead and leave this alone and we're going to jump over here and uh, start grinding on the right side of it. Um, steady rest will hold us true. I'll get the grinder gauge on it and we'll uh, get down to two thousandths away from our goal of the 20 under and then we'll jump back over to this left side and we will grind to zero and then uh, traverse across to the other side. So pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I might try and hold the camera while I'm doing some of this but we'll see. It depends on how I'm feeling. Okay, so we are at 484, um, and so doing some math to get to the uh, desired size of 20 under, we now need to remove 5,000 slats. So, on my grinder gauge, I now have it set to 5,000, and so, so you can see that. Um, again, we'll quit 2,000 early on this side. Um, so then that way when we do our final grind on the left, we can traverse or a phase grind and get the total hopefully nailed. Um, this has been grinding very accurately. Sometimes heat will kind of adjust the uh, measurement versus the cut, you know, if that makes any sense. And so um, I always kind of keep that in mind. Um, this has been pretty, cut and pretty true to size. So uh, we should be good to go on uh, staying right on, on the dot and just sneak up on everything.
All right, so that worked out pretty good. I actually kind of got... Nah, I can still see my Sharpie lines. Never mind. Spoke too soon. Um, good enough. Uh, it's round. It's to spec. That's all that matters. Um, there is a radius that exists, so um, we're not going to try and split here. We're not going to try and split hairs here because it's just... There, like I said, there's nothing I could do. I can't add material back in there. Um, so I just did what I could, got close. It will... That radius will look good on our other crank, which is um, just as important in my opinion. So that's that's going to still be good. So anyway, um, I will get this one out of the way, get it uh, rinsed off, and then we will chuck up um, this one. The only thing I'm a little concerned that I want to check is somebody was hammering on the end of this, and I really want to make sure that my uh, live center is going to live in there. Uh, nice and true so we may have to address that i don't think it really messed it up hopefully it sits deep enough in there it won't cause it to sit uh, up or down but we'll check it anyway um, these are left hand threads so they're really not fun to try and clean up i don't have a left hand uh, die for this so i usually just use a thread rake um, i hate it but yeah don't use a hammer on your crankshafts please just don't do it I, I'm tired of cleaning up these ends. There's way too many people beating on these things and I hate it. All that worrying for nothing. May, not even a half a thousandth. So that's probably in the actual journal itself. Um, also, uh, the threads didn't take too much to get them straight. The bottom was actually good. It looked like they only really hit the top area here, um, the TDC area. Um, so just kind of raked across between where that keyway or the uh, tab is. And uh, they, they look good. Um, obviously, thread rakes can only do so much. So uh, I tried to just kind of finesse them until I felt, I'm gonna go grab a, I've got a nut laying around. so. I'll double check it once it's done, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, bushing journal ground. I should have better luck with this radius. It's in way better condition. It's actually true to size, so um, that should work out just fine. We'll get it cut, and then we'll get this wheel off of here. It's going to start raining, and it's going to be loud, so I don't know how the audio is going to be, but just a heads up. Also, really quick, I wanted to show how much uh, I didn't pull the trap off my uh, tap yet, but it's it's got some decent decent amount in there. It's pretty heavy, um, and then this was what was all along the inside layer and the uh, bottom. So, decent amount of snot. I mean, always, always, always worth checking these out, guys. It's just, I, it's in my opinion, it's not worth the risk. I know that sounds really jaded because of my position. But uh, I just, I don't see how you could run it with that. Okay, so this one's good at 10. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I think it'll be better. Oh, after I polish it, I'll like roll it around and show you. But um, radius turned out pretty good. Uh, yes, all around good cut. Um, I'm going to get this out, get it rinsed off, get the coolant off of it, and then we'll switch that wheel around, and then we'll dress it and get it ready for one eighth radius. Okay. So I don't know if you're going to be able to tell a difference. This is the side I just did. Obviously, it's got kind of that white, dusty look because uh, it's a fresh cut. Um, but when I when I first face the wheel, um, you know, it starts to flatten out that uh, transition from the radius into the flat area. And I, I think it was yeah, it was at 964 before because I'd done the matchless uh, cranks with this wheel. But anyway, the one eighth is what we're shooting for. I just got done with this side. Hopefully I can get an angle on this. You can really see what you're looking for. So good. Got a really good transition. Um, really happy with how that came out. Um, so now I'm going to jump over and do this side. Um, it's slow and tedious, and there's really not anything you can see. The diamond is way down here. 
I can't even hardly see it while I'm cutting, so it's not really worth showing. Uh, but you kind of get the idea. But you just, you know, swing this. This is the one that's made by um, Jameson Equipment. Um, I have the one that's for the Van Norman, but uh, I have no idea how to use it, to be honest with you. No one's ever shown me, and I can't find anything anywhere on it. Um, but I, this one works great. I really like it. Everybody says this one's superior, so uh, I'll take their word for it. They, they know better than I do. Um, but I'm going to get this other side done, and we'll get these journals done. Okay, so at this point, we need to go back and talk about the stroke again. Um, you get, On this, I just have this like pretty generic scale here um, to kind of rough, roughly get it into place. Um, it, it's never super accurate, but it gets you started. And then what I do is I always put the crank in, and then I start kind of inching my way up. Now, I have both the uh, clocking of the crank off a little bit. You can see here I'm really close. And then as I come around... I got a pretty good gap. So that just means I need to actually twist the crank in the chuck. Um, then I can actually start playing with the up and down stroke. So I kind of want to get this uh, relatively close first. And then once I know I've got that in, then I can start going with the up and down. Whatever I get here, I will then kind of just translate over to this chuck and make sure um, they're both in the same plane. Okay, so from here to here, we're about five thousandths out. So not a big deal. I'm just going to leave that alone. Now what we want to do is this end has no adjustment, so we're going to set that as our zero. Zero it out, and then we'll come around to this side where we can actually make our adjustment here, and we'll look, and we are, check that, yep. We're 25 thousandths too close, and so I need to push the crank away and then come back, because uh, I'm sure it's similar with everything but like a lot of machines you'll have that uh, man like the slack in the in the uh, draw bar and so I always want to be on the top side of it I guess that's just the way I was taught to do it on this machine particular it might be different for every machine but that's just how this one works so I'll push it away come back get on top of that uh, slack again and then we'll fine tune our slack or er, We'll fine tune our stroke. So I'm going to, I, I might try to do this one handed actually. Okay, lock nuts loose. Yeah. Okay. Turn in that, which gets me a lot here, and then. I'm going to come back again to get back on that. And then we'll move away. Top side. Zero it out. Come back around. Okay. So with this, I'm within a pretty close range. I'm going to go ahead and leave that right where it is so I can fine tune it with the other chuck too. I don't want to get too close here um, because that chuck needs to come uh, meet us in the middle. So, well, I guess not in the middle. You know what I mean, whatever. Okay, so both chucks are torqued. I am now going to tune this in. It really should be close. Let's see. Not too bad. So I think we've got a lot of, uh, let's see here. So that's in the kind of standard up and down position, you'd imagine. Okay, 10,000 is not bad. So um, it needs to actually go that way, about 5,000. Um, and then we'll be right dead nuts. And then let's see what the up and down is. So now TDC right there. Zero that out. Come back around. Okay, not too bad. That's actually really close. Now, I think I do, I think I wanna start on this side cause it's the worst. It's more burnt than the other. Um, I hope that kind of translates. There's a lot of, a lot of burning, a lot of old uh, 
shell bearing is left behind there. It's smeared. So, um, that being said, these are going to be really close. So even if I jump over here, it's going to be relatively the same. Um, but I think I'm actually going to zero. And I usually start and just work my way across. Um, not a big deal either way. But I do want to start with that one because if that one needed to go, um, you know, if it's a, a, a 10,000 jump, you know, and it doesn't clean up, we need to know that because I'm going to match this side to it. So I always like to choose the uh, worst off side and start with it. So let's uh, actually jump over and do that side instead. It's hard to do left-handed. I need to get one of those cameras to strap to my chest. Okay, so I actually got set up using two hands, so nothing bad happened. Um, I am about 15 thousandths uh, kicked this way, as far as like the swing of the, the chucks. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll loosen them up and then kick it away uh, about seven thousandths or so and then we'll land right there in the middle. Um, it takes two hands to do all this so unfortunately I'm gonna have to put the camera down again um, but uh, you get the idea. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get this zeroed in. I'll show you when I get done and then uh, we'll start grinding that journal. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's this huge flat spot right at the top where it's, you know, suffered the most damage. So that's kind of the reason why I like to start on these more damaged sides. I wish you could. It's so quick, but I don't want to stop the machine just to show you. But either way, this is why I'm doing this side. So we're going to keep grinding until that cleans up. Okay, so you can definitely see how nicely our radius is going to blend out. It, it, Definitely matches quite well, which I kind of suspected would because uh, the grind or the uh, radius gauge looked really good on the crank. So I'm who I'm happy with that. Um, I've got a clean cut all the way around. I'm going to get the steady rest back out of the way um, so I can find out where it landed. There is just the slightest little line left right there. Okay, so I just checked it. It is at 1.671, so we're about six thousandths off of what would have been ten. Um, so it was pretty bad um, That means we need to just cut it to 20 no big deal. So I'm gonna set up my grinder gauge um, And then get going that way. Unfortunately, we will have to take the other side uh, to 20 also. I don't do uh, different journal sizes um, But not a big deal uh, 20s, you know, there's quite a bit more left, you know later on I I'm, it Takes a while to get to where you need to do this again. So um, You know 20 is nothing to be concerned with so I'm going to um, continue on. Uh, not much to see. You guys have seen this a million times, so I'm just going to uh, proceed, get this thing knocked out, and move on to the next one. Well, um, <laughs> I think we're jumping pretty far here. Uh, both journals are done at 20. Um, I wanted to show how that uh, chamfer around the oiler hole just completely disappears at that point. Um, we've talked about this before, but this is a really good example. This is 100% gone. I just knocked this side back in, so you can kind of see that nice little relief there. Um, but I'm going to do this side, and then we'll hit it with the polisher and uh, kind of get it to that final, final size. Um, and then obviously whatever burrs I create with the stone right now on the uh, boiler hole will get knocked down too by the cork belt. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to show that. I've jumped through this pretty quickly um but this crank's looking pretty good all three are nice and shiny but they do need that final polish so we'll get that done next well unfortunately i was in a mad rush just like i always am to finish this and so i didn't film any of it but both rods got reconditioned um i didn't have to do any resizing obviously i don't like resizing the big end on bsas um, i actually don't do that so um luckily these uh specked out 
I did, however, put new small end bushings. Um, the one side was actually starting to come out, which I'm sure I'm sure was due to the heat. Um, I actually found out that the uh, the guy who owns this currently uh, bought it from another guy who had flipped the uh, oil lines around, so it had gotten starved. That's why it was in the condition it was in. I couldn't remember if I had mentioned that before or not, but um, a lot of heat went into the small ends and one of the bushings was hanging halfway out but luckily it was still in really good shape it was still true and um, tight these bushings went in nice and snug and then I honed them to match so we are good to go on those um, I put new rod bolts in so just press the old ones out cleaned them up press the new ones in um, but yeah so those are ready to go um, and then obviously we went over 20 on the rod journals 10 on the bushing journal very happy with how they all turned out. Um, we're right in spec, so very, very good looking crank. Um, new uh, sludge tube and plug installed. Uh, and then we talked about, I cleaned up those. I I can't, I don't know, I, I need to look. I don't think you can get that size left hand thread. I'm, I'd have to look around, but I'm sure I could find one if I spent enough time on it. But um, yeah, good radiuses, uh, straight crank, good good splines over here everything else looks great about it so he's gonna have a decent crank here when he when he gets it back together um but yeah i'm i'm gonna wrap this up uh i will be doing a video i'll probably start it tonight or tomorrow morning um i'm heading to torque fest tomorrow so we'll do uh something a little different um but i want to get this uh uploaded this weekend and then i'll follow it up with the torque fest right after so um hope you guys enjoyed some of this but uh yeah a65 stuff